It's showtime. Okay guys, welcome back to the SCPL. My name is Kix, joining me is Rapid, and uh, we're Kix back again. Kix does not tell me when he's about to put me on camera, so thanks Kix. It's Big fine. fan. This is cool. You were, you were ready. Trouble is, I can't actually see your camera either, because I've got it hidden by uh, the Twitch window, so... Oh, sick. Man, we're, uh, we're, we're living fast and loose here at the SCPL. Yeah, I, you know what, it's actually quite scary, I don't know what could be going on behind this, but luckily enough, it couldn't be anything too bad, uh, otherwise we would have to just cancel the show, quickly cut the stream, I, I don't know what I'd do, that would be, uh, that'd be kind of awkward, but hopefully, hopefully we're not going to get into that situation. Hopefully, Kix, I trust you, I believe, uh, I, I believe in you, and, and if you can't do that, then at least believe in me. Who believes in you and I think we'll be okay. I appreciate that reference so let's head on to our third game between white and gold. The teams are tied one to one uh, which is surely surprising to a lot of people uh, but Bull putting in some good effort here and their next player is going to be Fly Mio. Now Fly Mio another Terran uh, has actually gone three for three against Protoss so he's played a lot of TVP because his opponent for White Clan is going to be first. Oh, no, he's actually third, but yes, he, he is actually called first. Uh, one of these days, White's going to play red, and we're going to have first versus last, and that's going to be uh, probably the best game uh, I've ever casted. But yeah. uh, it is first. Uh, I don't actually know anything about either one of these players, so I'm uh, a little bit uh, in the dark. So I'll leave you to introduce them to us, Kix. Yeah, the thing is, there's not really too much to say about them, but the map they're going to be playing on is going to be Colosseum 2. And we've actually seen four PVTs on here already, and that was just in the, four, the two weeks of show matches. So lots of Terrans, lots of Protoss being sent out here as well. Uh, we've had a couple of Zergs uh, for a TVT and a ZVP, but TVP on this map, very, very fun. Very easy for a Protoss player to get a third base. Uh, very likely to go late game, I'd say, on this map, because it's very easy for the Terran to sort of defend as well. And you don't really have to move too far out as Terran to take a third base. Even in comparison to something like Fighting Spirit, you only realistically have to um, have to defend one choke. And that's going to be the small ramp and, the, well, I guess it's two, two chokes. But either way, uh, let's head on over to our game and let's see how it's going to be between First and Fly Mirror. And looks like we have a little bit of latency again, but starting us off in the top left-hand position, we do have uh, the Orange Terran fighting for Bull. It's Fly Mio. I don't know really how you get to that name. Fly Mio to the moon. That's the only thing I can think of. In the bottom left-hand corner, uh, the purple Protoss player playing for White Clan. It is first who uh, probably, uh, you know, the thought process for his name is uh, maybe a little bit more understandable. But, but uh, hey, he, he, he has all the characteristics for being a Gosu StarCraft player in Korea. It's like you have yeah. a one-syllable name. It's, uh, you know, easy uh, to pronounce. It uh, means something superlative. So, uh, you know, he's already right up there with, like, best. And, 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 and King and Emperor and uh, all of these other like uh, great Korean pro gaming names. Stalk as well. I mean, one thing to say about first in this game, <laughs> he is certainly making sure well, he's going to be looking to not come last. Uh, that's a pun that I could have made earlier. Ha, 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 sort ha, ha, of ha, ha, missed the timing on that one. But either so way. Someone had to say it, Kix. We'll just move right on there. Yeah, now. Interestingly, Fly is going for a wall off at the front, but he's doing it in a weird way. Usually you would go barracks at the bottom and two depots above it, because this isn't going to be Zealot tight, I don't think. Uh, but maybe he's... Wait, yeah, I'm fairly certain this isn't going to be Zealot tight. 
but he's I gonna think he... possibly learn that the hard way. Hmm. Maybe he's used to uh, Coliseum One. I, <laughs> I don't know what to say, but uh, let's see what the probe wants to do. And it looks like is this gonna be Nexus first? Oh my God! It is, Damn man. the 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 twelve next coming through. Thing is, Nexus first on this map very strong as well. You can see from the main. Uh, to get up to that, you actually have to go up a ramp inside their main already. So as long as you can defend this one choke, uh, you've got two heavily defended bases. And early on, Terran doesn't really have too much to deal with that. Even if you go like two, two factory or whatever, it's very difficult to push through that choke. Uh, yeah, I mean, it obviously depends on uh, how much knowledge you have of that ahead of time. And with both players scouting incorrectly, they're not really going to know what's happening for a while. Um, also, I don't know what to expect from the playstyle, so uh, it's not like... Uh, I, I don't know if this is a, a regular occurrence from first, but I, I certainly think it's going to be working out this time around, especially if Mio starts scouting north after this. Yeah, I've just know, I've just looked, and one of the things about Fly's base is that wall, even though it's not zealot tight, he's going to use the Marine to block it. And later on, it is a little bit better against Arbiters. Now, the one important thing is Fly hasn't pulled out of gas, so he is going to be going for a second factory, I believe. Uh, if not, he's actually just forgot to pull out of gas, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, but two factory play on this map, very, very strong. Uh, just because you do have that ledge above the main and natural, if you can get some siege tanks up there, it's going to be very difficult to block. And of course, first and fly, both scouting dead last. So neither of them really know what's going on right now. Yeah, so this is about the best situation you could possibly have for a, a 12 Nexus where your opponent just walks around the map and doesn't really do anything for a while. I, I mean, granted, that light late scout means that Flymeo, or that uh, first won't actually know what's going on on the other side, but he'll see the wall, and really there's not a whole lot of other variation that you could have here, aside from maybe an extra barracks deep sixing you. Or like a command center first as well. He doesn't know if it's expanded, which is probably the biggest deal. I mean, we only see two zealots out at the moment. One mistake I'd say that Flymeo has actually made is he's shown his marine count. Now, if you see this many marines, you know there's going to be a push coming your way. And I mean, it doesn't look like it was going to be a two-fact after all. Uh, possibly even just for a machine shop. But the ironic thing is, uh, well, for siege mode even, the ironic thing is because he had those guys in gas, he didn't actually have enough minerals to get siege mode on time. So even though he's got a lot of marines, a couple of siege tanks are going to be coming out very shortly. Uh, this push isn't going to be as strong as it could have been if it just pulled out of gas. Yeah, I, I this does seem a little bit delayed. So obviously, you know, Fly Mio is going for this push right now. It's not going to be like the three siege tank if you're like really pumping hard off of multiple factories. Uh, but it is still going to hit at a, uh, a pretty good timing. Now, uh, this isn't such a crazy map that you can siege the mineral line from the low ground uh, on the north part. But if you wrap around to the side, you can actually deny uh, quite a few of those patches uh, from the low ground with the siege tank. So maybe that's where he's going to siege up and look to deny a little bit there. But right now, I, I mean, there are go those first two Dragoons trying to stop this push. They're just totally ineffective at it. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he's going to go onto that high ground pod. This is going to be a very strong position. Is he going to go into a bunker? Yes, he is. And he's actually going to be up against a shield battery behind us as well. Kind of surprising he's put the bunker where he has, but I guess he wants to just make sure he knows everything that's going on. And this is going to be first moment to scout for the first time in this game. The second factory is finally up. Maybe a little bit late. But this siege tank is going to be very hard to get out of this, this position. Yeah, uh, so this is actually a really solid push. Uh, you can see the uh, the observatory just now getting up. It's really the only way that that uh, first is going to have a reliable vision of this high ground. Like you can try to like maybe get out the uh, no. I, I, man, this is just really rough to deal with. So uh, mines coming out right now are going to make this even more difficult to get through. And wow, uh, I mean, Fly Mio is really just deeply entrenched here. Oh, he needs to use the mines on that bolt shitter before he goes down. That was a little bit of a mistake. I mean, we are going to have ops coming in soon. Uh, but we don't see any detection yet from Fly Mio. This is going to be a big, big deal if we do see anything like DTs. Finally, there is an engineer bay coming in. Whoa, kicks. Kicks, this one pylon is powering three gateways. Oh, dear. 
I mean, I believe we have a name for that in StarCraft 2, but... Not so sure I think I've ever seen it in Brood War, but there we go. Three gateways currently unpowered. And yeah, he's he not actually another... building any units right now. Yeah, he doesn't have any units building. I mean, he's going to have a turret outside of his main as well. Uh, we see Seacheng pushing onto the low ground finally. And I think, I think first may have just got bombed. Damn, what is happening right here? There's a hard push with the, the turrets just now uh, being completed. Mines in front. He's... He's building a supply depot in front of the turret to make it more difficult to take down. What what is happening right now? This is insanity. Uh, even the Marines aren't you know you know totally you know hiding back in the bunker. They pushed out a little bit, and he's just inching further forward. Now uh, the the way to victory and success for first or for for first at least it seems is going to be uh, you know bombing on top of this, but. I mean, realistically, I th oh, I actually, I think he's going to bypass this and try to drop the uh, uh, Dragoons, ferry them over to block incoming reinforcements, but, I mean, he's going to save himself from dying right here. He is, and the trouble is, losing that pylon actually, I think, lost in the game without that unit production. There isn't too much going on. Now, the one thing is, Fly Neo has a lot of tanks currently sat on top of mines, so if a drop does go down on top of them, Maybe we could see something coming in, but the vultures are in the natural now. The tank is sieging down on those minerals as well. And this is just going to be too much damage for first to be taking. Yeah, I know. I think this is just a straight up bop. The first push got into too good a position. And then obviously the, the pylon positioning was just a little bit uh, suboptimal. We'll call it that. That's like the second or third Dragoon that's gone down to mines so far. And uh, really, I'm mean, going for the shuttle first instead of like an observer. Obviously, maybe you needed that a little bit more, but it's just not working out. So finally, the Reaver is coming into effect here. But how good are these Scarabs going to be? The answer is not good enough. I mean, that one's a decent one, but he's already taken so, so much damage. There's turrets back at home to defend against any possible Reavers. There's mines as well. And I mean, these these Reavers are going to be able to take out some of the uh, smaller units. But you can really see how badly First was hurt by losing that production. He's barely got any units at this point in the game, of course. We don't see an expansion coming in from Fly Mio, so he's still pretty much all in. He has to make this work, but he's taken down the natural at First. Yeah, where did that shuttle go, Kix? Oh, it's flying into the main right now. But there's already yeah. turrets up, or at least there's one turret up. If he lands the, sh the, the Reaver in the mineral line right here and kills every SCV, oh, maybe God. there's a way to come back. Yeah, I mean, if he kills every SCV, he can make something happen. I mean, we see Flamio just pulling all of his SCVs. He's pulling them over to the natural, most likely. Oh, no, the mine taking down the Dragoon, and taking down the Reaver as well because of the tank. And that's going to be a little bit too much. I know I called that before. But, I mean, first is trying to hold on. I mean, they are even on supply. He's yeah. got another Reaver out back at home. Uh, the, the natural is destroyed, but, I mean, keep in mind, this is still a one-base Terran who has taken some economic damage. So, yeah, and he's not been uh, mining, the so... Yeah, the real scary part, though, is this is like six tanks, five, five tanks, I guess it is, uh, right up at the front. There's, there's still one Vulture still laying mine, so this is inching further forward. But, I mean, Reaver's... Uh... I don't know. I'm just uh, let's really not call scared it just of... yet. Yeah, I'm really scared about those mines. I get the horrible feeling we're going to see a big Zella bomb and just everything dies. That's the yeah. only situation I can see happening right now because if there's one way that Mio can lose the game, it's that. Of course, he could take some damage to the Reaver, but he has units back here to defend. He has everything he needs to defend back home as well. And it looks like the Reaver's going to come in and help defend. He has to now. His main nexus is under siege. Oh my god, the, the, the shuttle has been doing loop-de-loops uh, on the left side of the map. Going far out, trying to get to the enemy base, realizing, oh, I need to come back and try to save myself. Running into a turret, taking like three-quarters health damage, turning back around there. And now it's going back across the map, but uh, I think he's going to have even less success this time around with a siege tank right next to a turret. And mines everywhere. Oh god, and the this mines! gonna kill everything. Oh my god, GG. Insta tap out. Damn. What a way to lose the game. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I mean, that was that was just insane. A great push by Mio there. Really catching first off guard and really uh, punishing him for going for such a greedy build. 
and I mean, really great usage of the terrain from him as well. So, really good game nonetheless. Yeah, uh, very, uh, I think, surprising once again. A great strategy. I didn't expect for it to be that effective, but once you see that bunker come up next to the sieged tank on the high ground, you're just like, wait a second, how do you break through that? Uh, uh, maybe some zealot bombs, like you said, lots of uh, precarious mines, but it never happened. The Reaver got out, got did a little bit of damage, but then wound up going down to tragic mines again. And yep. oh man, just such a strong push. So that's uh, it's going to bring it to 2 1 in favor of Bull. It is. So let's head on over to the intro and we'll be back in just a minute. 